You may have heard that GPR works pretty well at finding underground pipes and cables. But how does it do it? Let me explain as easily as possible. As you move along the surface, the encoder wheel triggers waves of energy that are pulsed into the ground. These waves transfer energy in the form of radio waves from one point in space to another. Sort of like an echo in a cave. The sound waves from someone's voice are transmitted through the air. And as these waves hit a hard surface such as rock, the sound energy is reflected back through the air and received by the person's ears. Now in the case of GPR, the energy is electromagnetic waves that are pulsing through the ground. And just like the echo produced in the cave, the radio waves produced by GPR are reflected back to the surface when they encounter a boundary between two materials with differing electrical properties, such as the boundary between soil and rock, or what we're mainly looking for, which is a difference between the ground or the soil and underground utilities. The main components of ground penetrating radar systems typically include an antenna, an encoder wheel or sensor, power supply, a controller, and sometimes built in the display monitor. When this energy enters the ground, the ideal angle to detect the utility with ground penetrating radar is perpendicular to the utility, or by approaching the utility at 90 degrees. Now, when the radar is run perpendicular to the utility, it maximizes the amount of energy that is reflected back to the antenna, resulting in a strong hyperbolic response typically known as a GPR signal or image. The further you are from 90 degrees perpendicular to the utility, the greater the chance the energy may bypass the utility and might not be reflected back into the antenna. Results in a weaker hyperbolic response, a linear or layer type response, or possibly worse, you might even miss it. Sounds great now, doesn't it? It's also important to note that GPR is not a foolproof method for detecting utilities. Like with any detection method, GPR has its limitations and results can be affected by various factors, such as the presence of other materials that may interfere with the signal, accessibility to the site area that needs to be surveyed, the composition and material of the target utility, ground surface condition, or the orientation and depth of the target utility. I'll say it again, you've got to use all the tools in your kit available to complete the subsurface investigation. I highly recommend using GPR, but in conjunction with also using the available utility locating methods, such as electromagnetic locating and all your on-site visual inspections. Let me know in the comments below, what's been your favorite tip that you can share when using GPR to locate utilities. I hope this quick video giving you an overview on how GPR finds underground pipes and cables has been helpful. If it has, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our upcoming videos just like this one. You might also enjoy what we've covered in the video coming up next.